Attention! Although my content is usually family-friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Justice for All is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system, and as such, the videos in this Let's Play may contain blood, mild violence, and or suggestive themes. So, viewer discretion is advised. This episode of Phoenix Wright Justice for All was brought to you by the letter O. The o letter O stands for OBJECTION! Anyhow. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Justice for All, everyone. We are on the trial period of Farewell My Turnabout. I have no so, idea what to expect. Well, we know Old Bag's gonna be testifying, so great. <laughs> it's March 22nd. I forgot to turn down the volume from when we were watching stuff for dinner. March 22nd, 9.47 yeah, a.m. So if the voices don't sound great, I apologize. <laughs> I eat a lot of food. <laughs> it's the defendant lobby number three. Adrian did it? That's what it looks like. Dude, no way! That woman couldn't do anything like that. In court today, there will be a mountain of evidence that will implicate you. A mountain of evidence? I'm certain there is someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer! Dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, alright? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. Well, it's almost time. Oh, yup. Mia. Mm. We must get a complete acquittal today. I know. I can't focus on Maya's situation right now. Or Pearl's, either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of the day. Indeed. Well, let's get going. It's him. This is right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well, when I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a bit, how shall we say, tired. Don't worry, people don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, you must win today's trial. Which is why I sent you a little present this morning. Present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial opens, even if you don't like my gift. Ooh, I wonder if he said Ed Edgeworth. <laughs> I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest, if you please. Wait! The kidnapper sent me a present? Mr. Lawyer Dude, who is that? Ah, um, no one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? <laughs> March 22nd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom, number three. Our prosecutor's gone! That's a little weird. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt Ongard. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. Who's gonna be our prosecution? I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? I, I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor... Please be quiet, bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor... Prosecutor Von Karma has... This morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman! What?! What?! She can't be dead?! Sh shot Hold up now! I don't want Von Karma dead! <laughs> Somehow... I think this is the present that that man was talking about. His present? Miss Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. If she disappeared, this would be your advantage. Th this this is totally insane! M Miss Von Karma, is she alright? I I don't have the answer. She's alive and in stable condition. <laughs> That's good. Whew. You you you're I thought he'd show up. Me too! <laughs> your Honor! Due to the circumstances, Miss Franziska Von Karma cannot appear in court today. Yeah! If she got shot! I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready. Naturally. On the stick. <laughs> Finally, you're back! Miss Von Karma was shot in her right <laughs> shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. What is with this? This is so similar! Yeah. She's just gonna be like, whatever, I'll take the bullets! <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Oh my gosh. 
Luckily, I have looked this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt Ongard. Oh my god. The, the court acknowledges the prosecution. <laughs> this is hysterical. Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. Cool! I'm glad you had your little... Like, Siesta. adventure. <laughs> Siesta. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. At least you're still a prosecutor. Now then, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. I just realized, is he actually a prosecutor still, or are they like, Edgeworth, what are you doing here? Okay, you normally can't take, like, a year off to go explore. He said to Gumshoe at the end of the circus case that he was going to stop by the prosecutor's office, though. Okay. To probably reinstate. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to this witness stand. This is Edgeworth's <laughs> theme. It's slightly different. Okay. I wonder why they're so similar. It's basically the prosecutor theme. Oh, okay. Witness, your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective down at the precinct. For now. For now. After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. <coughs> and now we've got a video, Mari sneezed. Detective Gumshoe. The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. It's the change of season. Lift your head up and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Y yes sir! Now, let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. Get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be one very rough fight. Yeah. It would have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. The answer he was struggling for? Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edgeworth. Bare facts of the case. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes Awards ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Corrida, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about that empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Uh -huh. Hmm. After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room? Yes, sir! Both the victim and the defendant went alone to their rooms, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Bare facts of the case. It's nice, Edgeworth, back. I bet you're gonna be like, There's now just, like, nobody for you to voice, unfortunately. Yeah, Unless... I got Mia. That's okay, though. I'm a little... I'm I mean, you could try voicing Old Bag if you wanted, but Old Bag's hard to do. <laughs> well, we'll see. If she, if, if she comes on or not. Gumshoe may be like, I have 50 facts to list, pal. Maybe the killer shot uh, old bag as well. <laughs> that, she can't be shot. She'll be the one that's like, oh yeah, I took down my pop! Ah! And would like tap one. <laughs> would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, pal. The ceremony started at 6pm. It ended around 8pm, and then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say, the murder occurred during that 30 minute break period. Hmm, please continue with your testimony, That's Detective. That's when we were eating, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's when Maya's a- Come on, Nick! Do you want to be the last ones there? Oh, yeah. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. Who is this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? She's the defendant, Matt Ongard's manager. She's a really pretty lady, sir. Ah, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she, she will grace us with her presence. When the post-ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Mr. Ongard. After visiting his room, she next went to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. I see. And that's when she found the victim's body. He's definitely murdered, okay. The cause of death, wasn't that because Mr. Corrida was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now a real pro's attention would be drawn here to this bandana. Mmm, banana. Mm, um, banana. his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped tightly around his neck, sir. Ah, yes, yes, I see. His banana-scented bandana. Then what about the knife? It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. I wonder if it was a suicide. Hmm. What, like, I well, wonder... Well, what about the struggle that they had? Okay, my my guess here is Miss Andrews went into the room trying to find the note 
and they had like a struggle, so to speak, went around everywhere, and he was trying to get her out as well, and then, um, literally, like, necktie got hung. Because, sadly, I actually, um, knew someone who had that happen. They, wait, they got hanged because of a necktie? What? At our church. What? Yeah, yeah. I think it was last year or something. He was like eighth grade or something. He hung oh. himself. Yeah. Yeah! Wait, 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 it was intentional? I'm not positive. We didn't really know a lot of details. I don't think it was intentional. I think he was, I don't know. I'm not sure which would be worse. Or I don't if there know. is a worse one. I that... don't know. But what I'm saying is, um, there was it looked like there was a struggle in his room, but no one like broke in or anything. He was the only one in there. Oh. So it could be that, um, you know, he, he it could be even himself. That he was just like, uh, like having a mental breakdown, running into things, smashing his guitar, and then ultimately having his own demise. Well, and then Miss Andrews morbid. comes in. Well, but it I could am. happen. Hmm, we have a crafty murderer on our hands here. Autopsy report added to the court record. Let's take a look see at that, shall we? Alright. At first we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar. Uh, autopsy report. Time of death, 8.15 p.m. Cause strangled with a scarf, then stabbed with a knife. Okay, so basically, like... He he was choked to death, essentially. Choked to death, yeah. And then someone stabbed the knife into him afterwards. First we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar Yeah, you case. can kill someone like that in 15 seconds. And why did you think that? Because it was empty, pal. That's it? The jam and ninja <laughs> doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. The butler stole it. Oh, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime scene to get it. How's that? Um, we thought of that too, but... But? The only fingerprints on the guitar <laughs> case were the victims. Only the victims? Huh. Hmm, I see. Ah, so much for my theory then. The judges' theories aren't as good as ours. <laughs> guitar case was updated in the court record. Yeah, our theories are the best. What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Corita, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm... I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Hmm... Which brings me to my next point. Why, then, did the police arrest Matt on guard? Because there was reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in full swing. Very well. Detective Gumshoe, please testify about this matter. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of testimony. Oh, yeah. And Gumshoe's the shortest part, by I'm far. I'm guessing. Matt Ongard and Juan Corrida were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's motive enough in my book. Uh-huh. As for evidence, there's Jamma Ninja's button. It was ripped off of the ninja costume and was found in Mr. Ongard's Hakama. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. The defendant brought, uh, bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. The manager probably knows everything about her, um, dude, and she, she might even have, like, access to his fingerprints, who knows. Marty, we've been over this before. You can't, like, take someone's fingerprints, then use them to plant their fingerprints somewhere. Have we been over that before? Yes! <laughs> okay. Yes. I don't remember that. <laughs> hmm, so the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. Yeah, this was in, I think, Rise from the Ashes. Uh, the evidence lockers here. I bet the guy just, like, took Goodman's fingerprints that used that to open. I'm like, that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> Maybe. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sir. Knife added to the court record. And there's this button. That was found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Hmm, and this button also is covered in blood. Yes, and we know that the blood on it is the victim's blood, sir. What?! Jam and Ninja's button added to the court record. All this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, your honor. 
Ready to give in yet, right? Hm. I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. You can press as hard as you like. Just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. We're doing this for a reason. Here's my thing. It's like, Ezra is supposed to have undergone character development, but every time he does, he's still a huge jerk in court. I don't get it. He's his... himself. <laughs> Be yourself unless you're a jerk, then improve yourself. <laughs> but in terms of popularity, Mr. Ongard won, did he not? Yeah. But you know what's ironic, pal? Juan Corita was always one step behind Mr. Ongard in everything. This year it seemed like he'd finally caught up, ready for the big final showdown. But Mr. Corita lost the Grand Prix in the end? That is too bad, he must have been pretty downhearted after losing. This seems like a very weak motive to me. Mm -hmm. Wait just one second here. Mr. Ongard was beating Mr. Corda in the popularity polls. Well, yeah, I guess, but... Which means that in the defendant's eyes, the victim was not a rival at all. Which means he had no motive to kill at all. Oh, wow, yeah. Gumshoe's kind of packed on the pounds. <laughs> it's the same sprite he's always had. Hmm, yes, I quite agree. Well, detective... Um, it's not... well... I guess if we put it that way, then yeah, the defendant would have had no motive. Detective, I'm beginning to see why you were fired. Eh? No, no, not you too, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! That's... I look forward to your pension negotiations. Wow! No! no! Yeah, see? Edgeworth's such a butt! <laughs> Now, now, detective, let's continue Maybe with the testimony. Maybe that's Edgeworth's version of joking. No, not my poor pension, too. Detective, if you value your money, I suggest you proceed. Yes, sir. We can talk about my pension later, sir. I um, wish Gumshoe would just get a better job. Like, uh, yeah, I know! He seems reliable enough, and he seems willing to work hard enough, apparently, since he can do all-nighters and stuff, yeah. that he could get a way better job and get paid more. Yeah, Even a I'd... better police detective job elsewhere. Yeah, I feel so bad for Gumshoe, like, through the entire series. And, like, all the prosecutors are such jerks to him! It's ridiculous. Um, what was up? What about what I was saying? Hello? Anyone? As for evidence, there's Jim and Luigi's button. Do you have any proof that the button belongs to the victim? Huh? I don't get you, pal. Oh, um, let me put it this way. I'm asking you if you have any evidence to back up your claim that this button was ripped off of the Jammin' Ninja's costume. Huh? But can't you tell just by looking at it? And the victim's blood is on it! Anyone could have smeared that blood on there afterward. M -m mr Edgeworth! Help me, sir! Alright, I knew it had to be that piece of evidence. Now to reel this one in. Fred... Huh? The button was attached to the costume by Fred, obviously. And that Fred snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the Fred on the costume with the Fred on the button, it's a perfect match. Wow. Yeah, that's it! They're a perfect match, pal! Urgh. That's Edgeworth for you. Never misses a beat. It was ripped off of the ninja costume and found in the Akama. When was this button found? Pretty soon after the body was found, we rounded up everyone who knew Mr. Corita. And then we did a search on them all. That's when we found the button. Hmm, so it was almost immediately after the murder. The police didn't have the free time to lollygag and play tricks, unlike some people. Hey, what's he trying to say about me here? The defendant's fingerprints were found all over the knife. How were the fingerprints arranged on the knife? Huh? What do you mean, pal? By examining the fingerprints, you can determine how the defendant held the knife. For example, did he hold it normally or overhand? Oh, is that what you meant? Oh, well, we didn't actually think of that. I can't believe the bumbling of this department. Hopeless, were you paying attention to the testimony, right? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. So he's just like, what? <laughs> yeah, basically. There's no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. Hmm. So is the defendant the owner of this knife, then? The defendant bought the knife for the crime which makes it a premeditated murder. 
There's no way this was a premeditated murder, even if he bought the knife. Sorry, pal. This isn't just some pocket knife. It's not really useful for anything, and you can't just walk around with it either. Ah. Well, this is not good. If the prosecution can prove it was a premeditated murder, we're done for. Phoenix. Y yes There's something very interesting about what the detective said just now. Think carefully before it's too late. A button covered in the victim's blood and a knife of Ongard's fingerprints. Be grateful. If the judge were more rash, he would have already pounded his gavel in closing. We're still in a world of trouble. Well, before any battle, you must find your enemy's weakness. So let's find the weakness in this testimony, no matter how small it may be, okay, Phoenix? Also, the uh, button was ripped from the costume, is covered in Korda's blood, found in Ongard's Hakama. It's your pants? Yeah, his, like, samurai pants. Bears the victim's blood and Ongard's fingerprints in the grip gate water is engraved. Okay. That's kind of weird. How so? Well, if you were a murderer, wouldn't you prepare the weapon yourself? You wouldn't get it at the hotel. Well, they're saying that he bought the knife. At the hotel? Oh, we sell knives! <laughs> yeah, that seems weird. Objection. Wait a second! Wh what? So the basis of your argument was that this was a premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand? That's right, pal! The defendant did not buy this knife. H huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Huh? It has a Gatewater seal set into the handle. Gatewater? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel? The Gatewater Hotel? Uh-oh. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel! Which means this murder was not premeditated! Yes, that is very true! This is a very big... <laughs> well, what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. How so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There is no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't know- Oh. <laughs> the question is... Where did this knife come from? W why that's obvious, it came from the victim, Mr. Corda's room. Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. There's a knife and a fork on the table! Okay, but you know what? Like, trying to- s using a hotel knife to do anything is like trying to cut, like, with your elbows. Like, they are not sharp. They're just like- It's a fancy hotel, maybe they have better knives, I don't know. Then, where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt Ongard. Especially what was on top of his table. There is something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife? We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt Ongard's knife was missing. <laughs> Wow, that's convenient. Mr. Ongard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife on to visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven that this was a premeditated murder. But you normally, if you're gonna do a murder, don't do a murder. But <laughs> if you are going to, like, you prepare a weapon. You're yeah. not like, well, hopefully I'll the hotel will have serve knives. a steak. <laughs> yeah, basically. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked headlong into it. A murder weapon with the fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There is quite a sizable amount of evidence here. 
I can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of your honor's time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown? Why? He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well... Phoenix, the judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here... That gavel of his will be raining out to the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to this court? Actually, I do. Uh, not right now. This has to be another trap. Better if I don't say anything than risk throwing out a bad piece of evidence. Looks like the defense isn't saying a peep on this one. Which means this court is adjourned. Phoenix! We'll lose this case if you give up here! So you had better show the judge something quick! Slow down! We all know I have a tendency to be wrong more than... I can't even say it. <laughs> yeah, we had to go back to hear him slap it yeah. one more time. There's one. One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court has yet to see. Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I am giving you one chance, and only one. What the judge is saying, Wright, is don't try pulling one of her usual bluffs here. I messed this up. It's curtains for all of us. You may not oh present one, and only one piece of evidence. Ah! Now then, what is the important evidence that you must show to the court? I'm being blackmailed right now by this dude, and if I don't get this court case correct, then my, uh, friend, female friend, will be done for. <laughs> you wanna do no. that? No. <laughs> I mean, we have to do something wrong, so if that's wrong, we could. Okay. Sorry, Wright, but this time your bluffing steered you wrong. I can see nothing strange about this piece of evidence. B wait! I am a man of my word, Mr. Wright. You actually had it right the first time. It's the wine. It's the wine. This is a wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken. His makeup is all over the floor. These were all things that were at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm. Well, yes, I see your point. However... This glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over, along with everything else, is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Well, what do you all have to say? Ah, oh, well, yes, it is a little peculiar. Y yes, isn't it? I thought it was! You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Mr. Edgeworth? What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion? You don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Wouldn't you drop it? Like, dramatically? Oh! <laughs> yeah, that's what people do. Hmm, that does sound very plausible, Mr. Wright. Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? It's possible. There's no way. <laughs> and it's possible that that is what happened. There's nothing that points to Miss Andrews not being the one who set the cup down. And if I raise an objection here, that would only make the judge slam his gavel down. You can't think like that, Phoenix. Mia. Right now, you're hanging on by a very thin thread. Anything else you can grab onto right now is better than nothing. So in other words, push as far as we can go. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on the table. Hmm. You've turned the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. What? 
He's like, oh, I'm better than Rye. Oh, I'm better than Rye. You're not thinking hard enough today, right? Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? The then. Of course, it has been thoroughly inspected. Four fingerprints. Fingerprints? There are only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? They were not the victims nor the defendants. Rather, they were of one Adrian Andrews. What? Wine glass updated in the court record. Maybe she was hanging out in there too. That is why I said that the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Ugh, I can't believe I fell into another trap! Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corrida. Don't mind me drinking my tomato juice. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm, what you said just now makes a but lot of sense. there was the bottle on the ground. Now do you see, right? You can't change any part of my scenario, as it explains everything all too well. Urgh. I fought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I have come to discover. W wait a second, Mr. Edgeworth! I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. What? The prosecution has yet another witness we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? The prosecution would normally never do that. They'd be like, well, we're but... done! My job's done! Yeah. woo -hoo! Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. Oh, weird lady. What in the world is Mr. Edgeworth thinking? He's on our side, like, nationwide. <laughs> Nationwide is sort of kind of a little bit on your side. <laughs> now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Could you get out of your space suit? Witness, your name and occupation, please. Oh, she's going to be so excited to see him. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I wonder what happened to that calm composure he had earlier. Oh, Edgy boy! It's been, what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet, it was the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand! I tell you this time what I, I know I'm what I'm supposed to do. So today, I'm going to tell you anything and everything. Even things that don't have to do with that terrible crime. Ugh. Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all this court needs to know. <laughs> Oof! Shush! I'm talking to my dear Edgy Wedgie right now! Don't interrupt us, Gramps! Yes, madam. No, no, no! Please! By all means, interrupt her! Please! <clears throat> anyway, witness your testimony, please. It's true what they say that youth are hot-headed nowadays, not that I mind at all, Edgy. Now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Oldbag? It was a great job being able to see my dear Iwan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean you were a fan of the victim? Look, everyone is crazy over that on guard saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. <laughs> but not me, I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man, Juan Corrida. Uh-huh. Um, but those two were the same age. Anyway... As I was saying... He's <laughs> incredibly slowly. I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well. Please tell the court what you witnessed on the what night of the murder. Was that the problem with the, um, with the game? I don't know. Very well. Okay. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. Witness testimony. What you witnessed. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye on uh, the whole time. That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was on guard, Matt on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Hmm. So Mr. On guard came out from the victim's room. See, it has to be him. He's the murderer. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, everybody. Because, honestly, the first few episodes of this were around an hour long. 
I want to try to get back to the little more sure. than a half hour episodes. And I know how long the score period is. It's really long. So we're going to need a lot of episodes anyway. So thanks for watching. Tune in next time. We get to cross-examine old bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not really. Anyhow, have a great day and God bless. <laughs>